Welcome back to another video guys. In today's video, I'm gonna be explaining exactly how much my luxury shipping container home in Salton, Washington has made in its first year as a short-term rental. I'm gonna be doing a deep dive on all the income the home has generated, as well as a detailed breakdown on all the expenses, and ultimately what it takes to run a shipping container home as a short-term rental in 2024. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you guys. I did lose money in 2023, but I'll be explaining a list of things that I'm doing to optimize and hopefully turn a profit in 2024. So for January and February, the bin wasn't officially launched as a short-term rental. I did host a few stays of friends and family that wanted early access to the bin. So I discounted the rates so that I could get some feedback and really refine the home before we launched and opened it up to all of you guys. January was $450 and February was just over $1,500 in total revenue. Also shout out to Shelby Church. I took a lot of the format for how much my Airbnb makes from her Palm Springs Airbnb breakdown video. So thanks Shelby. March was the first month that we were running full tilt as an Airbnb, and we generated $13,212, followed by April coming in at just over $9,700, which I attributed to the in-between seasons where you transitioned from like the cozy winter stays to summertime. Then May coming in at $9,500. Then we start getting to the summer months here where things ramp up a bit. In June, we came in at $12,742. July was $14,890. August at $16,600. $61. September was $13,023. October was $12,172. And then November dipping down to $9,600, which I figured was the transition from fall where it's just stunning out here. The whole forest turns orange. It's so pretty, which leads to December, which came in at just under $15,000, bringing the total revenue that the Pacific Bin generated in one year to $127,984. So the average cost per night ended up being $493 a night at a 73% occupancy rate with some of the weekdays going all the way down to $250 a night and some of the weekends in peak summer being upwards of $700. 73% occupancy seemed a little bit light to me, but going back through my calendar, it looks like I blocked off 53 days at the home. Backing out those days gets the home's occupancy rate up to 90%, which I was more than happy with. And those 53 days were friends and family coming into town, us just spending some time out here. Like, spent the whole last year and a half building this thing, I might as well enjoy it a little bit. And then another chunk of those 53 days was me blocking off specific days that I was gonna be doing loud activities while I was building the Cedar Hollow, even though it's a couple hundred feet through the forest and you can't even really see the Cedar Hollow, which the Cedar Hollow is a luxury couples getaway I just finished up building, so there's more videos on that soon, but it's a, it's a really cool build. But I blocked off a handful of days as I was doing framing and I didn't want guests at the bin hearing just bang, bang, bang of nail guns going off. I'm huge on guest experience here, so I really want each stay to be as special as possible for guests, and having a quiet, relaxing, surrounding forest is a key part of staying at the Pacific Bin. On average, backing out January and February, the home made $12,596 a month. Annualized, that's $151,000 in gross revenue each year for the Pacific Bin, which 2024 is gonna be a bit interesting with interest rates as high as they are. People are definitely more aware of how much they're spending, but it does seem like there's a softening in the market happening. You can also see in this income chart here, a breakout of where I got direct bookings, Airbnb and VRBO. Airbnb came in really strong for me as this is an Airbnb heavy market along the Highway 2 corridor at $67,000. My direct bookings were just under $50,000 and VRBO brought in just over $10,000. Homes like the Pacific Bin can obviously turn some serious cash as a short-term rental due to the unique design aesthetic that comes with shipping containers. So in honor of the bin turning one today, the first 50 people that purchase my construction plans will get a 70% discount on the plans. I've never offered a discount on them. I normally sell them for $3,500. So it puts these plans at $1,000, which is a stupid value as I paid over $13,000 for this set of plans. It includes the full structural, plumbing, electrical, floor plans. 
everything that I needed to get my permit for this home. I've never offered a discount on this full set of construction plans. So the first 50 people will get that just insane discount. Even if you're not looking to build the Pacific Bend exactly, I've had a handful of people purchase the plans and use a lot of the structural details, floor plan layouts, plumbing details, electrical routing that I've done on the Pacific Bend for their own container homes and their own variations on them because ultimately it's a pretty modular system and you can use a lot of the details on your own homes. I've spent hundreds of hours working with engineers coming up with this set of plans. And I know these plans will be super helpful for all of you building container homes, wondering how do I do these window details with the structural steel? Or how do I route the plumbing between the two containers? Or how do I brace the second story of containers? So if you are interested in purchasing the Pacific Bins construction plans, it's gonna be the first link in the description down below. And if you use BIN70, B-I-N 70, at checkout, you'll get 70% off. And keep in mind, that's only for the first 50 people that purchase the plans. Right after that, it'll jump back up to $3,500. And if you guys do have any questions about the construction plans, feel free to email me, info at thepacificbin.com. More than happy to answer all of your container home questions. But back to the not so fun stuff, the expenses of running this home as a short-term rental. I went back through my credit card statement and itemized every expense from the year and broke it out into each of these categories on a monthly basis. First be my electricity bill, which works out to be $261 a month. In the peak of winter, it can get up to like $350, $400 a month heating the whole home, which you gotta keep in mind that the entire home is run on electricity. The heating system is on a mini split system, so it's not a conventional gas furnace or anything like that. And the water is also drawn up by an electric pump at the well, so we don't have any water bills, which is a huge plus of building in unincorporated. My biggest expense for running this home is my cleaners at $1,700 a month, which I feel so, so blessed to be working with an incredible group of cleaners. My next expense was my property tax, which works out to be $255 a month, or roughly $3,000 a year, which my property tax was assessed on just the land improvements. We were able to build this home so fast that the appraised value for 2023 was just with the home having land improvements. So my property taxes are gonna go up quite substantially in 2024 as they have revalued this whole property with the single family structure on it. Next up is my Starlink internet, which came in at $115 a month. It used to be $110 in the start of the year and they cranked it up to 120 in the last half of the year. Then my homeowner's insurance was just over $270 a month. My hosting service fee at $255 a month. I use Guestie for host, which has been incredible, coordinating all the direct bookings, integrating all the booking softwares. I am a huge fan of Guesty and cannot recommend them enough to any hosts that are getting into the short-term rental game. Then Price Labs at $20 a month. It, the first couple months it was a little bit more and then I got a deal where it's 20 bucks a month for a while and it's just been 20 bucks a month, which I use Price Labs to optimize my pricing structure. If there's random one day gaps, it'll drop the price so it'll get filled. And honestly, I'm super happy with the whole Price Lab structure and all the data that they provide. It really gives you a lot of insight into what the market conditions are. And then my Amazon miscellaneous expenses column is $882 a month which this is quite a bit higher than what it's been the last couple months. This was typically just buying new bed sheets, new pillows, making sure that everything is in just impeccable condition. Like I was saying, guest experience is huge. So I really, I really spend a lot of money making sure that this place is perfect for each and every stay. And then my trail cam came in at 20 bucks a month and that's not so I can spy on the guests. That's just so I can see when guests check out and check in and when the cleaners arrive to make sure that everything's flowing the way it should be. So I guess my biggest expense not just operational based is my loan payment, which is $5,000 a month, which I've been paying $7,000 a month just to knock that thing out as quick as possible. I've been taking a note or two out of Dave Ramsey's book and <laughs> any debt is bad. So I'm trying to get this thing socked away as soon as possible. Plus I have some loan terms that incentivize paying it off as soon as possible. So hopefully I'll be ramping that up even more as we go into 2024. So how much did I actually make in 2023? So my total revenue was $127,900 $184.76 minus my total expenses, which was $128,684.76 works out to be a total net loss of $700.06. Oh, nothing like spending half a million dollars to lose $700 a year. 
Now the caveat to that is I could easily dial back my loan payments and scrape a little off the top for myself, but between my day job and everything else I'm side hustling with, I don't need that money, so I'd rather just pay off the home as quick as possible. So for example, when this home is paid off, making that $12,500 average per month minus the $3,700 means this home is making almost $9,000 a month just in profit going straight to my pocket. So. I really wanna get this thing paid off. Taking a step back, looking at my Airbnb business as a whole, I actually lost over $100,000. And that's due to me building the Cedar Hollow, which is a couple's getaway way in the back of the property. Which, that's a little teaser into the detailed cost breakdown video that I'm doing for the Cedar Hollow. The bins budget breakdown video exploded with over 3 million views and I did an even better job documenting. I can't wait to show you guys the total cost breakdown for the Cedar Hall. So definitely make sure you hit subscribe and like this video too. It helps get this out <laughs> to more people, but you're not gonna wanna miss that one. Overall, 2023 expense wise went pretty well in my opinion. A few lessons learned were I initially was doubling up on guesty protection for my rentals and my Airbnb protection. And then I also had a separate homeowner insurance policy, which you can see in the expense breakdown. My guesty expenses are crazy expensive the first couple months, but then I realized I could drop that and I still had full coverage of the home. So that's the first thing that would save me a good couple thousand dollars not having that on 2024. My next big cost saving measure was canceling Starlink internet. So when I first started building the Pacific Bin, no companies offered internet service at the street. The nearest neighbor that does have it is a couple miles down and the only internet coverage I could get was either pay $25,000 to run a cable line down the street, which that's out of the question, or pay 500 bucks for a setup fee with Starlink and 120 bucks a month to have internet coverage here. But since then, T-Mobile has actually expanded their coverage area, been able to opt into T-Mobile wireless internet, and all you do is you plug it in, pay 50 bucks a month, and it's been incredibly high-speed internet. So that's gonna save me north of $800 every year. The last big cost-saving measure is to not block off as many days as I did in 23 on the property here. With the Cedar Hollow being done, both of these homes will be able to be rented out and I'll be able to offer more days to guests and people that are looking to stay. Which doing rough back of the napkin math at those 53 days times the average daily rate, I'll be able to generate roughly $25,000 in additional revenue in 2024, assuming that nightly rates stay the same and don't drop. So end of the day, was it worth building the Pacific Bin? I would say 100% yes. It's not only a permitted property that's building equity, but it's also a cash flowing business. Well, at least once I dial back my loan payments or pay the thing off completely. Plus, I also love getting to meet all you guys, both digitally that reach out and tell me your container home stories or just wild stuff you guys have going on in your lives or the people that are staying here and like, hey, I love what you did. And I'd always try and pop by with a bottle of wine or just say hi and meet meet everyone. This, this home and project has been such a blessing. So I wanna thank all you guys. And if you guys are interested in purchasing the construction plans, whether you're building your own kind of container home or wanna build the Pacific Bin exactly, the link's down below. First 50 of you to use code BIN70, you'll get 70% off which is just an insane value. And after that, it goes back up to $3,500. Anyways, just wanna thank you guys again. I'm gonna be releasing the Cedar Hollow full tour video here really soon. Can't wait to show you guys the place and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.